Hey, well, my wife bought me this out of the return bin at a store. Um, remote control rock crawler. And um, it was kind of toast, toasty, the people who brought it back and damaged it. I'm not sure it was quite their all their fault. I think the battery in it was, the connector on it was bad. And it came off and they put it back on and they put it back on wrong. And let's see here. Here's the control board. And this is the control board and is in these modern day ones. Man, I remember the, some of them had like three boards when I was a kid. And as you can see, it toasted the power regulator pretty good. So um, that's not going to work anymore. But everything was modular. So you got all the KST connectors there. So that's nice. You got your crystal there for the receiver and on the back is the chip right there is your combination H bridge and radio receiver chip um, it actually does have markings on it um, can't see them here and that is an op amp over there it looks like um, used for the I'm guessing it's close to the Left, right turn to your steering. Because these things don't have a, a servo in them. So it's kind of bang, bang um, turning. So either on this way or on this way. So, and maybe that op amps for um, current detect. Oh, actually, maybe it is for proportional. I don't know. I, I have the remote control for it. It did come with that. Came with that. The battery didn't come with the charger. And then, of course, the car. Um, but this is no good because, well, this is fried. So, um, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, but, it, again, it was nice. Everything was modular. So, didn't have to worry too much about that. But getting back to the op amp. The op amp may have been for, for proportional steering. I don't know. Um. I'm gonna I'm gonna say no because usually with these bang bang type servoless um, Ackerman steerings, um, they they do not have proportional steering. They're either on completely one direction or on completely the other direction. But I will say the remote control um, does feel like it may, and I may break this down later. Um, it feels like it may have a pod in there. Um, it doesn't feel like two switches. Um, and this actually even feels like it may be proportional to, but I don't know. And I, again, I may break this down again. Okay, getting to the, the actual unit itself. We'll take these off. I've already unscrewed this to take everything off. And the body, the body actually is removable. Um, and here is the actual car itself. Um, minus electronics, so board was right here, and um, before it lit, released the magic smoke, and got your, I've done some work here, and see, here's your LEDs, the LEDs that came with it originally were burned out, um, and I replaced them with actually big um, 10 millimeter LEDs, so uh, big white, bright ones bright white ones so um and they are in parallel so um not in series so you just run it with your little three-ish voltage or to five voltage and um you know knock your current keep your constant current or limit your current and then here is the switch right here actually you just got a JST connector too for your batteries and here is the front and back motors I have since replaced them with a, a regular JST type remote control um, connector and I did the same for the turning and um, Trying to figure out what I'm going to do with it. I actually like it. It's got 
pretty good suspension. I mean, it's fairly independent. Um, and, you know, it's made to climb rocks. And the gear ratio is actually pretty good. I've ran it outside by, um, well, I've done it two ways. I These are um, escapes or ESEs that I use for little robots, combat robots. Um, and um, I put one for the steering and one for that, and I put it on another remote control. And and I was actually impressed with the with the, the gearing and stuff. It would go over some some big sticks and go go up hills, and because I live in a kind of hilly area, so it may climb rocks. It's only big issue is the steering. The steering is it's kind of um kind of not turning all the way when you when you have it um through power it's not turning all the way to the right but to the left it does um so i may need to take that apart and um have a look at it and see if there's anything i can do if not then maybe i can replace it with a servo itself but i'm still not sure what i'm gonna do with it I was wanting to, and I've kind of been thinking about this again, do the third iteration of uh, a robot I've built. Well, this would, just would be the third time. Um, a GPS waypoint robot. And I kind of wanted to go smaller this time. The first one was real big, and this was years ago. And the second one was uh, medium size. And... Um, I'd like to do it in something this size. Um, my only fault I find is the steering. Um, my other two bots were differential or tank steering. So, um, and um, the way this guy is not turning right, I would be doing a lot of corrections um, as it goes on. Um, so, that being said, I could remove, there's only one motor here to drive these motors here. And, and they're, like I said, they're connected to the front and back. So they go in the same direction. If I, you see that back one spinning out. Because they're connected together. Um, I could either one, put a servo here, just disconnect that. Um, 3D print a mount to go up here and put a, a big standard servo to turn it and make sure I can turn it in both directions equally the same and also be able to keep the front wheel straight. That's another another issue with this these old cheap model Ackerman steers or even even the non cheap models the the, the, the front end kind of gets out of whack as you drive them and you know, that's why they align cars, you know, um, wheels. It gets out of whack and you have to change it. And there is a little switch on the bottom to do that. You've probably seen them on the other ones to change that. But um, right now, I don't know if that will um, be the way I'd want to go. So I do like the body. I really do. And I think it's exactly what I want for the size. And then also the abilities because I can climb hills and you know go over some obstacles. Got room for sensors because the the, the amount I'm gonna be putting on here be less than a kilo. So this and this spot would carry it. Um I just don't think I'm gonna do that. But I think what I am gonna do is I'm just gonna make it a, a remote control again. Um may hack this and put a microcontroller in there with a NRF um, board and um, use the these two con these two mechanisms right here for the control and hook something like this guy up and here is the got this in the mailbag um, last week and this is the um, Maker Pi, or excuse me, yeah, Maker Pi from um, 
um, Cytron. And it's the Maker Pi RP2040. And um, it has a H dridge right there. And that is uh, the MX1508, similar to power wise as a L298. Um, and there's room for a heat sink there. So I could put a heat sink there. And also, they actually have room here because they're separate. And I could probably put a heat sink at the bottom too to double it up. But the stall on these motors, I've already checked um front end back the stall on the actual drive motors is um a just a hair over an amp and so we're good there but you know a lot of times you know that's your stall but you, a lot of times you're going to be driving close to stall so and the stall for the bang bang turning is just a little under an amp so they use a different motor, which has a, a lower stall, probably higher torque, but lower stall. And I think what I might do is drive it with this. I can put a heat sink on there. I've tested it and um, let it run back and forth. And I used the little controllers for the motors here. And, it, and I just held it down and put my hand on the, the H bridge and it never got above warm um, and that was at complete full speed for the for the front and back motor so and I stalled it a few times and held it for several seconds and it never got above warm so I think taking a precaution with with the, the stall current on these these being so low or under the actual amperage here because this guy is 1.5 amps of continuous um, and adding the heat sinks it'd probably be okay um, you know famous last words but I, I do think it will be and um, but you know I'm still in the back of my head could I modify it to be what I want so I'm still undecided um, and going to think about it for a while. But um, let's turn this guy on. This is the default um, program it has on it. And this is um, got Circuit Python on it, I believe is what they have for the demos. So let's turn it on and see if you can hear. There you go. Plays a little Mario tune there. Um, hopefully YouTube won't get me for that. And um, you can do some testing with it. Um, I don't have a battery right now. Test it to do. Um, it's, it's got where when you hit this button right here, that would make the one of the, the, the first channel of the motor driver go full speed. Or excuse me, not full speed, half speed. And you hit the button right here. It'll turn it off. And the code is actually out on their GitHub repository. And again, it's Circuit Python. Um, but it will run MicroPython, and then you can do the um, C stuff for either the Raspberry Pi SDK or the Arduino. Um, and there's two different Arduino um, interfaces for it. Um, now, um, if I, if I do it as a bot, I still want to have, um, to be able to get back at some information from here and also send settings and stuff. Cause on my other one, I use Bluetooth and a tablet to send my waypoints and then get information back from it. But here I'll use, I would use Wi-Fi and that's a UART channel right there. And then. Well, it, 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 you know, with the with the 2040, things are multiplexed, and um, so you have uh, the option of having different peripherals on different pins. But I would use this one for the Wi-Fi, and I could just sit, hook a ESP01 um, module up to it. Nothing more than that needed. And I've done that with um, 
Let's see. On this, this guy does that exact same thing right there. And it's a, a Raspberry Pi Pico. And I connect it to a, a ESP01 through the UART. And it works really well. I mean, you don't want to run a, a big broadband web server on it. But for getting information to and from simple web pages, it works great. I mean, because that's what these were originally made for anyway, as a USB um, serial UART for, you know, for microcontrollers. So um, hook that up there. And then over here, I've got um, my I squared C bus that I could hook sensors and other things up to. And and I would probably do that for my GPS. I would, um, I have a, I have a wire GPS module that I would set up here on a pole um, right here up above the unit and um, with a compass also. Compass would be I squared C and the GPS by default would be serial. But what I would do is just put a little other, like a Pro Mini in front of it and do I squared C um, so I can get the sentences from the GPS module that way. And then, then I can just have them going into the I squared C bus along with any other sensors like uh, a time of flight, you know, L LIDAR type sensor or any other sensors that I may have, um, probably temp and stuff like that for compensation um, to, to read that. So anyway, that's a plan. I'm either gonna either gonna bot it, or I'm going to make it a remote control car, but with a microcontroller. So yeah, let let me know what you think. Thanks a lot.